Welcome to Celebrity Liar. My name is Andrew Hill Newman, and to my left is your liaison to the lying luminaries, the lovely Londoner Louise Rowe. Thank you. Hello. Uh, if you're new to our game, uh, the way you play along with us is through our chat room, and Louise hosts the chat room, so when you log on, you will be able to speak with her and post questions to our celebrity guests through her. Indeed. Are you ready to assume that responsibility? Ready to rock and roll. All right, Louise is going to get into the chat room. I suggest you do too. If you're watching on theroomlive.com, uh, on the homepage, go ahead and click on the thing where it says uh, chat and view larger, and you'll be able to do just those two things. You'll see a bigger screen. You'll see a chat window. You pick a name. It's really easy. And later, you'll be able to vote on who you think the liar is. The game works like this. Two celebrities tell you the same story as if it happened to them. In truth, it only happened to one of them. It's up to you to figure out who's the liar. We've got some great celebrity guests, so I'm going to get right to uh, introducing them. Our first guest is an excellent <laughs> tennis player. He's a big fan of men named Arthur, and he enjoys milk. <laughs> His work on the big screen includes films like 17 Again, Numb, The Whole Nine Yards, The Whole Ten Yards, Three to Tango, and Fools Rush In, to name but six of the many. And on TV, you have loved him on series like Boys Will Be Boys, <laughs> Sydney, The West Wing, and Studio 60. Oh yeah, and a little decade-shaping juggernaut called Friends. He is currently co-writing and starring in a pilot for ABC called Mr. Sunshine. Please help me welcome Matthew Perry. Hello, sir. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Louise, Matthew, Matthew, Louise. I'm just trying to figure out which one I'm more attracted to. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Uh, our next guest is a multiple <laughs> Emmy Award winning actor. He is the voice of most of the people on The Simpsons that aren't named Simpson. He was the star of Huff. You've also loved him on series like Friends and the groundbreaking Herman's Head, which I know we all have the DVD collection. He's kicked ass in an amazingly wide range of films, including The Birdcage, Shattered Glass, Along Came Polly, The Cradle Will Rock, Dodgeball, and Night at the Museum 2. He's also the director of a multiple award winning short film called Nobody's Perfect. Get to it. Hank Azaria. <laughs> Hank Azaria. <laughs> and he's on <laughs> Have you two met? Hey. Hey, buddy. How's it going? <laughs> You're lying. <laughs> no, we're, not, we're not at that part yet. Oh. I was sincere when I said, hey, buddy. Oh. <laughs> uh, they're not only playing for Not Connor. true. No, no. <laughs> You're jumping the gun. I'm so sorry. <laughs> They're also playing uh, for a chance at $144 million, the largest prize, I believe, being offered on an internet game show, uh, because they're playing for Mega Millions tickets, and tomorrow night's drawing is worth $144 million. Matthew, should you win, I'm sure you will donate a generous yet undisclosed percentage of your winnings to some worthy charity. M what, what might that be? Uh, I'm going to donate. Uh, there's a wonderful charity called the Lily Claire Foundation that I host this event every year for them, and it's for children with neurogenetic birth defects. Pretty funny. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to donate. If I if I win the the uh, if I win the lottery, I'll I'll give half. Fantastic. Yeah. Hmm. Wow, you're setting the bar very high. Hmm. Uh, Hank, uh, will you be playing for Determined to Succeed? We have to disclose what uh, portion of the money we would give to We didn't have to, but he <laughs> said the <them> half. <laughs> yeah, half. All right, well, I'll think about half. Um, I'm playing for Determined to Succeed, which is a fine educational charity that I actually run with my good friend uh, Sarah Hahn. Uh, it helps inner city kids uh, in Los Angeles for now, but we hope to expand it. Um, helps them and mentors them and tutors them uh, uh, through high school, starts them in sixth grade and takes them right through to I am actually college. the person who runs that program. <laughs> <laughs> am I not understanding no, the game? Yeah, well, no, you are, but you just... <laughs> you understand the game perfectly, you're just jumping the gun. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. you started your line too early. a little too early. All right. Uh, if you're just joining us, that is the object of the game. I'm going to select a story at random from this bowl. They shared these stories just before we went on. Uh, I don't know whose stories are whose. Louise doesn't know whose belong to who. Uh, and then we've also selected who's going to go first at random. And you're going to have to figure out who's lying. They're both going to tell you the same story as if it happened to them. In truth, it really only happened to one of them. We're going to put two minutes on the clock, and Matthew Perry is going to go first. 
and he is going to tell us a little tale we have titled Audition. Oh, okay. Do I start now? When you start talking the class. Oh, oh, oh. Go, go. Um, okay, <laughs> this is, uh, I'm a t I've, I've always been a terrible auditioner. Uh, I've, I've never done really well in, in, in auditions and like in the last 10 years I've had like probably 18 auditions, zero, no job at all. I get way too nervous for them. And this is a story about the sort of the pinnacle of that, like the worst case that this ever happened because my mind doesn't shut off ever. So I remember I was auditioning for Scent of a Woman, the uh, Chris O'Donnell role in Scent of a Woman, which by the way, I did not get. <laughs> um, so I was auditioning for that and I was reading for the casting person at Universal and whenever that was and I went into the room and the thought occurred to me where I started to think like if I want to say a, if I want to say a sentence if, if I want to say like uh, let's go to the house how does it translate from me thinking it to saying it and I went bananas and I like couldn't like I was like if I want to say the word house I think it, and how do I say it? It's actually pretty confusing. <laughs> but it really did freak me out, and I started to think that, and she said, go, and I couldn't go, and I didn't say anything. And she, I think she had, been, she had like worked a lot with kids or something, and she was very nurturing and very, very helpful, and she was like, just take a second, take a deep breath, and just start to say the line. You say the line, I'll say the next line, like I was a little kid. <laughs> I'm really, I, to this day, I'm really surprised I didn't get the part. <laughs> and uh, I later went to therapy about it, and I see my time's running out, but I later went to therapy about it and still see this, this shrink. And he kind of calmed me down, and it was all about me making it way too important. I would like fame, and the job was way, way too important. So he taught me, like, there's other things in life that are great and important, and then I calmed down a little bit. So that's my audition story. <laughs> <laughs> that was a pretty rubbish bell. <laughs> uh, yeah, that wasn't a great bell. <laughs> I, I, I'm not in charge of the bell. All right. Yeah. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, I, w I was lying, I am in charge of the bell. Can we help the bell a little bit? Uh, Hank, I understand you had a similar experience. Yes, that was very well done, Matthew, uh, except uh, it really did happen to me. It was not any kind of big audition like Son of a Woman. It was um, some toss-off pilot that I can't even remember what it was, it, but it was, at, it was at Warner Brothers. And I think that the, uh, it w I think it was Megan Brandman who was casting back then. And, uh, good God. And, um, that happens when people lie. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, sure enough, I'm there with these silly sides for some sitcom that never made it to the air. And uh, I go in and I had been getting very, 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 very nervous in auditions. I had been auditioning well for a couple of years and all of a sudden I just like, couldn't do it. I, I quit it to like a batting slump or something. I just was getting very uptight. And I thought this time I won't prepare so much because I'm tending to over prepare. And uh, I went in and she read the, I'm just reading with the casting director, it wasn't a big deal, I'm just, you know, we're sitting across a desk. And um, I just free, I just can't, she says her line and I can't like say my line, I just get lost immediately and don't, uh, I don't know what to do, I just froze, I just literally froze. And she had to, she was very nice, she had to take me through how you do this. She goes, okay, listen, here's what you do. I'm going to say the line and you just listen to it, you listen to me. And then when I'm done talking, <laughs> you look down at your line, you look down at your script, and then you see what your next line is, and then you say that to me. And we'll just go back and forth like that. And I was, the nicer she was, the more I was dying inside. <laughs> and I, 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 Big Shocker did not get that job. And I did, it made me go to a show. I saw a shrink for the first time based on it. I was like, you know, I, I can't audition all of a sudden. I've been doing this for like two, three years, and now I can't. I can't read, you know, I, and he did, uh, and the, the shrink I still, s still see to this day, Phil Stutz, he told me I was making it too important. Being, and I wasn't so much afraid of not getting the job, I was afraid of how hard I was going to be on myself afterwards. And to this day, whenever I audition, I make sure I do something nice for myself afterwards, like I have ice cream or I go see a movie I like <laughs> or whatever it is to try to take the pressure off. And uh, it was the beginning of realizing that I was a perfectionist and that was a bigger problem in my life. Okay. Wow. I'm just going to lock the door. Yeah. yeah. Maddie's going to lock the door because someone almost walked in. Uh, I don't know how to lock the door, so bring somebody else to lock the door. Uh, I think he's lying. I think he does know how to lock no, the door. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Look, see? Uh, wow, this really could have happened to either of you. 
Uh, do we have any questions from the <laughs> chat room, Louise? Well, someone's proposing to you. Really? Oh. Yeah, oh, but that's her nice. name's Amy Kins, and she says you don't have to answer now, you can sleep on it. I will say yes. I <laughs> 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 will say yes right now. However, he's lying. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm, yeah, I'm not telling the truth. Like. Um, last girl standing wants to know, did you call each other beforehand and say, let's wear matching outfits to confuse people even more? Huh. I actually wondered that myself, too. No, we just, we've been friends it. for a long time. We're just, just very happens. similar. Oh, yeah. Okay, question from Matthew. Wh what was the name of the therapist? The name of the therapist was Mark Morrow, Dr. Mark Morrow. <laughs> and I would, and I would, <laughs> and I used to that, call him the please. island of Dr. Morrow. <laughs> <laughs> Risa wants to know how old you are. I had been auditioning for like three years, so I must have, I came to LA when I was 22. I must have been like 25, okay. 24, 25. Um, and so Chlorella wants to tell you you're drinking too much Red Bull. It's not no, good for you. No, I've had two sips, Chlorella. <laughs> Chlorella. <laughs> um, that's wow. it for now. Uh, you know, Matthew, I have to... Those were really penetrating questions. Serious. <laughs> <laughs> it's eyebrow. It's eyebrow shit. Yeah. It's not so much a lie that I've caught you in, but an exaggeration. You said 18 years, all those auditions, no jobs. Uh, I went with you when you auditioned for Friends, and you got that job. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Well, that job everybody if knows you'd take I did me get. To <laughs> <laughs> if you take me to the other auditions, maybe you'd get those too. Do you remember how long ago that was that uh, we had your cell phone? No, nobody had cell phones, so, and you had like this weird cell phone that was like the size <laughs> of like Charlie Sheen's phone in Platoon. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you were holding it, we were just looking to see if Waiting we... To remember? See. Uh, yeah, you did get that one. I did get that one. Yeah. Uh, do you remember the name of the casting director by any chance? I don't. I don't. I'm sure Megan you Bradley You could IMDb it. You, you know something, uh, to be honest, I said Megan Bra I, I don't know that it was Megan Bradley. It, it was, I, I was listening a lot for her at the time, but it was somebody at Warner Brothers, at the, like that little side place at Warner Brothers, not, not the Warner Ranch. Like at the other. post office? No, post not that. That's Universal, the post oh, office. Oh, the Universal, yeah. Uh, Shows you how long it's been since I've had an audition. Anyway. <laughs> um, uh, let me ask you this. Either of you, uh, or both of you, ever freeze up again? Or is this a one-time occurrence? I freeze up all the time, but never like that. Like that, I, I, I was in the middle of some kind of, like, attack. Like, I was in the middle of some psychotic break. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, don't, you don't, like, think, like, how, does you say, how do you say the word house if you want to say the word house? That never happened to me. But I got so nervous and sweating and messed up a bunch of auditions. Imagine if you, Lori, had that problem. Yeah, because he's on. Because he wouldn't know his own name. <laughs> Actually, it would be worse for the other people on his show. Yeah. Yeah. Bad joke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, Louise, why don't we uh, why don't we urge the people in the chat room to go ahead and vote it up? Because well, they are ready. They're not I'm, even waiting. I'm a little for torn. Your... Tell me, is it a large percentage yet? Because it I... is so close. It's just it's it's be. getting I'm even buddy. closer and closer. I, hmm. I know you both. And I don't know this story, and I really don't I know. know. I, I know. You know? Yeah, totally know. You think you know, huh? Yeah, I really do. I'm <laughs> going to guess that this is the liar. <laughs> Are you ready? All right. Uh, tell me, what is the result of the vote? Uh, who, <sighs> does, who does the chat room think the liar is? 56% talking like this and this think that the liar is Matthew. Wow. Oh, and I disagree with I you. I have to say, right? I went with I Hank disagree. also. I thought, I thought Hank was the liar. Uh, let's reveal it to us and to the chat room. Will the liar please stand up? No! Oh. Good job, Maddie. Wow. Good. I actually believed it was Matthew. It happened to Matthew and not me. <laughs> wow, you all... Wow. So I, uh, I'm losing. But so far, but it's close. Okay, yeah, it's yeah, it's close. close. <laughs> 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 Not much has happened yet. <laughs> uh, so why don't we do it again? What's Hank? the score in proposals? All right, I'm reaching deep within the bowl of stories. Let's get two minutes. Oh, on the, the bowl clock. of stories. Oh, the bowl of stories. <laughs> So many good times at the Bowl of Stories. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Seriously. Hank Azaria, please favor us with your two-minute rendition of Fake ID. Fake ID. Um, I was uh, 17 years old, and uh, on my first uh, spring break uh, from college, from Tufts University, and I had been a year ahead. Uh, that's why I was underage at that point. I skipped a grade. I had skipped sixth grade. So everybody's down at spring break. We want to get in the club. 
but uh, I can't, I'm 17, so I got a fake ID made. And uh, uh, it said that I was 22, the fake ID, and uh, which would have, let's see, I was, in, I was sort of born in 1960. So, you know, the ID says 1960 is my birth date, but you have to memorize it to make sure you know how old you are. Because it doesn't say on the ID, you know, you are 22. Um, and I, I understood that they'd trip you up that way. They'll try to trip you up that way. They'll ask you that question. So we're, uh, we're, we're at the club, we're online, and they're, sure enough, checking the IDs very thoroughly. And uh, sure enough, the um, very large uh, black man who was the bouncer, you know, looks at the, look, kind of looks at the ID, looks at me. And it was sketchy. You know, I'm kind of look like the guy. I mean, it's not my ID. And uh, sure enough, he goes, uh, how old are you, man? And I'm ready. I'm so happy. I'm ready. I go, 22. Like that. I go, 22. <laughs> <laughs> the guy lets me, the guy kind of looks at me for a second. He goes, all right, all right, all right. And he waves me in. And my friends are like, what's wrong with you? What was with the, why did you sound like Jimmy Carter when you said this? <laughs> what was with that? I said, I don't know. I, I just felt like I'm playing a character who's not me, so I have to give it some character. <laughs> I felt like I had to give it some believability that it's not me. I'm 17. So I gave him a southern accent <laughs> and said, 22. <laughs> that's it. That's the whole story. Uh, it does fill me with some questions. You didn't freeze in that performance of the southern. No, it's something. improv, spontaneous. Uh, I understand something similar happened to you with a Yeah, that's guys. a story that Hank is saying, like, he's got a funny voice. That's not true. <laughs> you know? Here's the, uh, here's what, uh, my fake ID, uh, story that I brought in today, um, <laughs> was, uh, I, when I grew up in Canada and in Ottawa, the drinking age was 19, and in Hull, right across the, uh, right and Hull, right across the bridge, where the drinking age was 18, and they, they were sort of more lenient about carding. So we all, you know, when I was 16, I think, we all, my, my friends Brian Murray and Chris Murray and David Shepard and all these guys, we all got fake IDs. And it was, it was true. And whenever you get a fake ID, you, you memorize it and you learn it. And I wanted to test it, and I also wanted to see the movie, uh, <laughs> if the movie was Hot Dog the Movie. <laughs> yeah. And it was like... Uh, it was, you know, like a softcore porn movie, and that was where I was going to test it because I figured the stakes would be lower <laughs> to go test it there, and then maybe it would work at the bars. So I memorized the thing, and I think it said 1965 was my birthday, and I had remembered that they might say, how old are you, or are you a Leo, or any of that stuff. So I'd memorized all that stuff. And I gave my ID, because you had to be 18 to go see this movie in Ottawa, and the guy said, uh, the guy said how old are you? And I said, in a very, very low, ridiculous, low adult <laughs> voice, I said, he said, how old are you? And I said, 1965. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really sort of endearing, because the stakes weren't high. It was for a movie. And he sort of just like shook his head and said, get out of here, man. <laughs> and, I, and I left. But my heart rate was up. <laughs> Uh, but you Hot Dog the Movie, not a bad film, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so you did get a chance to see it. I later. saw it later. Sure. Uh, I, I'm interested. I know that when I had fake ID, it was a New York State driver's license that you could change back then with a razor blade. Uh, but what was it? Was it a student ID or a driver's license? Or do, do you remember? You know, I honestly don't. It's going to seem like I'm lying, but I, I really don't. A, a friend of mine in college had given to me my buddy Rich Kaplowitz got me the ID. I remember that. And, and uh, it was definitely not a, a New York State driver's license, which is where I'm from, which I think led me. I think, in fact, it might have been a, a local Florida one, which is what led me into my stupid southern accent. You know, 22, as if I'm a local. I'm from Gainesville. Cause I, <laughs> Just down from Gainesville. Uh, and was it some sort of Canadian ID card? or? A yeah, it was a Montreal McGill University card that my friend Brian Murray had managed to change, and the exciting thing was that it was laminated. With so your it, it had like, yeah, it had my picture on it, and it was, you know, it had really hard lines, and it was bigger than my wallet. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, Louise, any questions yeah, from loads. the... Yeah, uh... You've had three more proposals. That's wow. great. And, so uh, four to zip. Four to zip. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sirica says, can she run her fingers through her hair? Kind of difficult, Sirica, really. Um, sure. Right now. And Emily, I would pump for Emily because she says she's down for poly poly polygamy. So you're all right. I'm sorry, you said you would pump for Emily? <laughs> pump. Oh. It's British. Okay. Uh, I oh. understand your vernacular. Because she's down for what? I don't understand anything you just said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, polygamy. Yeah. Having multiple partners. Oh, oh that good, is. Good. Yeah. That's, that's the way to my heart. Down for that. <laughs> um, <Jane. laughs> it's all right. That's what I thought. James wants to know, where did you get the fake ID? Well, we just address this. Yeah. A buddy of mine in college. Sorry, I'm, I'm very depressed because this, this. I'm aware that this sounds. He sounds much more believable than I do. <laughs> but this really did happen to me. And yeah. why would you get a fake ID with someone else's photo? That's kind of lame. No, no, no I was the one who had Oh, the, sorry, sorry. Okay, that. No, I know it, but it worked back then. It, it was someone close to me. Just you know, say that you're lying. <laughs> I'm genuinely not lying. In fact, if you know from back then, that was most often what you did. You got an ID that was close enough, because it was very hard to get an ID that that actually was forged documents. Way you know. back then. Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, why don't we uh, let them vote? And uh, while they do, I will say that the, I got caught with a fake ID. Uh, when I was in a bar in Hartsdale, New York, uh, and it was my brother's driver's license. I was all of 16 at the time. And Years old. The cops came in and actually <laughs> busted this place because a lot of high school kids would drink at this place. And when the cop asked to see my license, I showed it to him, and the cop knew my brother. Oh, uh, that's really wasn't, bad. Wasn't, wasn't good. Kind of sucks. You're lying. No, that's actually <laughs> true. But right. you don't have to vote for me. What you're voting for is who you think the liar is. They don't want you to pick them. They want you to believe them. Louise, are the votes a coming in? They're in. Okay. Ready? What? What's uh, the wait, let, let me think. I. Oh, you have to. Yeah, you know what? I believe that this person is lying. And we'll see if the room agrees with me. What does All the right. room say? 65% of you think that the liar is Hank. Wow, I again went against the room, and I think that Matthew is the liar. Uh, guys, who's lying? Will the liar please What do you up? guys think? Hank, yeah. Hank looks Hank. pissed Hank. off right liar. <laughs> <laughs> you are not happy. Oh, I'm lying. <laughs> 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 he actually believed it himself. <laughs> Wow. That's good for me, right? Uh, that's really good for you okay. because you get uh, two points since they... I'm up two to one. Oh, and that's first. why I'm so bitter. Wow. <laughs> that and the whole proposal. Thing. Yeah, I was going to uh, say, can someone propose to hang? All right, let's yeah. fly right into Don't the lightning bold, round people. where you can make up some points. Lightning Matthew. round, lightning round. Matthew has given me five <laughs> facts, some true, some false about himself. He's going to say them. Hank is going to answer <laughs> rather <laughs> quickly whether he thinks they're true or false. Not when there's cameras. <laughs> <laughs> like lightning, like lightning. Oh, okay. So I just read these. You yeah. read these and Hank will say true or false. Now? Yes, please. <laughs> My first concert was a culture club concert. False. I cannot recite the alphabet without doing it in song. <laughs> I just hope so bad that's true that I'm going to say true. I once weighed 240 pounds. That's fucking false. <laughs> Season 9 of Friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, yeah. <laughs> I uh, have never read Catcher in the Rye. True. I am so good at Miss Pac-Man that I can basically play till I get tired of it without losing a guy. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's... Ah! Oh, I need this! Because <laughs> he's good at video games, you know, but I don't think he messes with... Pa Hey, that's false. <laughs> Fuck you, it's false. <laughs> All right, let's read. Listen, I could get married to five women right now if I feel like it. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Matthew, you're a good liar. I hope you know that, ladies. <laughs> good luck with your marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew said his first concert was a culture club concert. You said it was false, but that indeed. That's true. It's true. Uh, yeah. Uh, he said he can't recite the alphabet without doing it in song, and that indeed is true. That's, that's a point true. for Hank. I can't do it. <laughs> oh, sing it. 
A B C D E F G H I J K Q R S T U V W X Y Z. You can't just take the tune out of that. No, but I can't do it without it being in that that song. But you can't you can't just recite the alphabet. No, try it. A B C D E F. I'll I'll believe me. I'll fuck it up. It's like house. When we get to the L M N O P. Oh fuck it. Oh no, that well that is a tough one. Yeah. Uh, Matthew said he once weighed 240 pounds. You said it was false. Yeah, is that true? But the it? fact is, no, it's false. It's false. Oh, yeah. it is false. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yay. Another point for Hank. Uh, uh, quite timely today, J.D. Salinger passed away. Matthew said he never read Catcher in the Rye. Maybe not be a good time to do it. Uh, it is true that he has never read it. That's three for Hank. And you got the fourth one right, too. Pac-Man not one of the ah, points. You so did. that's smart me. I did. four points for Hank in the lightning round. I needed those points. That's a big shift. That's Matthew, big you shift. need to get at least three of these to tie him, four of them to win. Okay. No looking <laughs> at the answers. <laughs> uh, Matthew, I hate dill. <laughs> I hate dill, the spice dill. Oh, is there an I don't I care answer? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, I would say that's probably true. I hate orange soda. I think that's false. I hate the Yankees. That's definitely false. I hate the final Star Wars movie. It's a very negative list. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you probably like the final one. I hate when a woman files her nails. I think that's false. And you screwed up again. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a nice theme, all the things. Oh, the hate. Who cares about the theme? These are things we've known each other for 20,000 years. <laughs> the only <laughs> things he knows. He only beat you by one. Uh, yeah, but the proposal, I beat you by like five. <laughs> yeah. He does hate Dill. Uh, he doesn't hate Orange Soda. He doesn't hate the Yankees. You were right. He does like the final Star Wars movie. You were right. Uh, the only one you were wrong on, uh, he's not crazy about it when a woman files her nails. So, Matthew, you got four. It was a very close game, guys. I gave, I, you know, I gave you so many better I protest the whole thing. <laughs> well, you know what? There's going to be a rematch, and there'll be better oh, good. ones Why do you there. not like when women file their nails? It gives me like, like nails on a chalkboard. Oh, right? yeah. I, th I think that's, I like that. yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, you as I get married? <laughs> yes. Cool. Hey, I get this? Yeah, you do. Okay. And uh, Hank, you get this, which you know it could win. You don't know. Could you don't be know. One hundred and forty-four million dollars. Why does he get? Why does he get? Because it's a console. You get one. You got five. Yours is better. This is just one. No, there's five different. I'm going to stop talking. Uh, <laughs> Louise, did you have fun? <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you. Uh, uh, I want to thank you all for watching. I want to thank Robin Ruzan and Michael Davis and Matt Edwards and everybody here at theroomlive.com. If you're not coming back to theroomlive.com, you're making a big mistake. They got great music. They got great cooking shows. They got great comedy in here. They got Celebrity Liar. There's wonderful things going on. Come back. Check it out. Check out the archive stuff in video on demand. But most of all, thank you very much for coming for watching and for playing along. Thanks for watching Celebrity Liar. Bye-bye now. <laughs>